Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this week's webinar. Um, my name is Joel Markham. I'm the CEO and founder of Architect uh, Group. Uh, we'll just give it a few minutes for some people um, to finish the last meeting and jump onto this meeting. Uh, but as always, if you could put yourself on mute, that'd be much appreciated. Um, uh, just helps us to keep the flow of the of the session, really. Um, so yeah, thanks for everybody who's uh, come back, uh, who's attended these before, uh, and welcome to those who haven't attended an Architect uh, webinar uh, previously. Um, so uh, myself today, I'm joined by Chris. Uh, so Chris is our head of development, and uh, he's actually taken the uh, the print of this one and uh, going to do the actual demonstration itself because it's far too technical for me to do this demonstration. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I've used my uh, delegation skills there. So uh, thank you for Chris for, for to Chris for putting the time in uh, to get this one uh, this one set up. Uh, for the audience today. So without further ado, we'll, we'll kick off and go into introductions. Um, we'll do uh, just an overview of, of our history and our competencies. Um, we'll do a bit of a backdrop on what is a power automate, just you know, because robotic process automation is as part of power automate uh, software or product suite. Um, and then uh, at the end of the session, then uh, Chris will do his demo. Uh, and then we'll go on to talk about the future of RPA uh, and we've got uh, and any other business and Q&A session as well, uh, uh, kind of place ordered at the end of the session. Uh, but, you know, as always with these things, if anybody's got any questions or, or points they want to raise, um, you know, or queries throughout the session, then please do just take yourself off mute and just interrupt myself or, or, or Chris or even uh, use the, the raising your hand feature in, in Teams as well. Um, or furthermore, you could put a, a question in the chat window and we'll uh, we'll address it at the most appropriate point. Um, so thank you for thank you very much for all those who've joined. Let's jump, let's jump straight into it. So our history then. So uh, my background is PMO, project programs, portfolio management. Um, but uh, you can see here that I ended up in, in Babcock as a head of projects and governance. Uh, I spent five years in Babcock actually. Uh, and then I left uh, Babcock on, and that's where Icotech really started. Uh, our first customer was Company's House. Uh, I was a consultant there uh, for a year and I was the head of transformational P3 projects, programs and, and portfolios of change. So uh, yeah, that was uh, like my kind of my background and my history. Uh, Icotech today now is, uh, I think we're 12 or 13 uh, in full-time employees with a full uh, with a few uh, contingent workers as well a few contractors and a few part-time consultants as well so I think there's about 20 of us all together actually now which is uh, pr pr pretty amazing um, but we have customers like Bayes and in department for for business industrial uh, strategy uh, ONS, ACAS and IPO as well so uh, predominantly in the public but we are also in the private sector as well um, I guess what makes us different is that we deliver value at pace, bottom line. Um, it's, it's our ethos, it's our methodology, it's our way of working with our customers and with our stakeholders and with our partners. Uh, but basically, we're always innovating, we're always sharing our ideas and our learnings. We're networking and we're building great relationships as we continue to do. Um, and we're always excited to show you the best tools and systems that are out there in the market uh, for you to consume um, or ask us to help you with as well at the same time. So, um, but the idea of this is to show you today what RPA is, what it can do in a very simple use case for your business or your business process, uh, and hopefully inspire you to go and download a Power Automate desktop app and start playing with this tool and this technology. Um, we've had a number of uh, positive inquiries from these type of sessions, you know, even just, just having an hour of Chris's time no cost just to kind of, oh, sorry, Chris, I'm throwing you under the bus there again, mate. <laughs> your, your diary's looking pretty busy next week. But yeah, we have had a number of organizations come to us and say, look, can I just have an hour just to put some context on that? And we're more than happy to do that type of thing. It really is. If we can get more people using this technology, then we'll be happier here at Icotech. So um, that that's for us is delivering value at pace. So um, our offerings, I guess, are broken down into four key components. So it's solutions where we build specific applications to meet a business objective using Microsoft 365. We've then got a range of products, and this is kind of coming this year now, um, this financial year, uh, where you can procure standalone SaaS products from us that we've pre-built and pre-configured. Pre uh, consulting is, is merely me actually or me or Chris going into an organization and just doing some visionary works and roadmap exercises and, and requirements and discoveries and that kind of thing uh, and then we've got services as well where we build these products and services and we're able to uh, to be on hand uh, like a, a service desk almost uh, but in, in a modern uh, more kind of agile way 
Um, if I could just remind people, can you put yourself on mute if, if you wouldn't mind? It just helps reduce the background noise and allows us to keep on track. Uh, that is much appreciated. I guess our speciality then is really Microsoft, Microsoft 365. We're a Microsoft 365 goal partner now. Um, we specialize in projects, so project online, project for the web, um, and project operations as well now, which is a new product, a new service that's coming out from Microsoft and, and the dynamic stack. Uh, power apps, um, so the model driven apps, canvas driven apps, um, and portals as well. I forgot the new, there's a third one. Uh, power BI, Dynamics 365. Um, but I guess anything within Microsoft 365, uh, we have capability uh, within. All right. So any questions, any thoughts, any just you know, general observations, um, any challenges that you have, uh, please, please feel free to reach, reach out to us on any of the social channels um, or reach out to me directly and uh, more than happy to help you. So I guess just setting the scene for the day then. So just to go up a level really, um, what is Power Automate? So for, and I'm conscious that some of you may have seen these slides before, so apologies if you have, I haven't gone too detailed for this one, but just to set the scene. So Power Automate used to be called Microsoft Flow, um, but Power Platform, it's one of the four products within the Power Platform uh, and therefore Power Automate has been rebranded too. But effectively it's a tool that allows for task automation. Um, and it connects different applications and services together. So it, it, uh, the number of connections, I've, I've lost count. I can't be bothered counting again because it's just endless. Um, and even when you can't connect or can't download a connection to a third party product um, like Xero or, or Oracle or SAP, then you know nine times out of 10, we can build these, these integrations using APIs and, and different services across the Microsoft technology stack. So it's really about you know connecting twitter to the dynamics or co connecting you know um what's that one there that bloody thing that's called slack that's it that's the icon for slack <laughs> so slack to uh, to salesforce you know it's about you know dropbox to sharepoint it's connecting these different services that are in the cloud these disparate systems across your organizations um enterprise applications and bringing them uh into either a single source of the truth or connecting them together um and building this layer of integration workflows um automation and connections really um so that's the technology we're talking about today that's what we we use to build robotic process automations um, it is Power Automate. All right. Um, so let's jump into it in a bit more detail then. So robotic process automation, um, I, I, it's a number of different things really, but you know, in the far-fetched kind of bleeding edge, it's AI, it's machine learning. All right, and it, the design here is to, high, is to handle high volume repeatable tasks that a human would have previously done. All right, so it's where we're kind of seeing, um, you know, an administrative function or an operational function with two screens or, you know, a, a paper process, you know, where we're kind of the role of the human is to go and manipulate data or add data from one system to the other or take it out of a system, you know, where um, these tasks are repeatable and there might be invoices that come in, letters that come in from the post, or there might be kind of CVs, um, you know, from application uh, applicants supplying for a job and you're putting them onto a digital platform or a digital system, you know, in the cloud or legacy, doesn't really matter. But you know, I always remember, um, well, years ago when I was playing with Excel uh, macros, you know, it, it's it's effectively a very clever macro, although Microsoft might might not help, not, not likely for saying that, but it is essentially a very clever macro which you could design and build yourself using low code, no code um, kind of processes. Um, you know, where you can record yourself going through as a series of activities, you know, creating a new record, copy, paste, copy, paste, and saving the record and allowing that to happen automatically. Um, that's RPA in a nutshell, really, in a basic form. Where you add machine learning and AI onto that is where you can you can get it to spot key fields in key documents and start to understand, you know, for example, date of birth. You know, it could be right, could be written DOB or D.O.B, you know, or date of birth. Or, you know, it could be written in a number of different formats and using AI to, to kind of spot what the date of birth label is is where RPA can use AI to spot those and machine learning to spot those uh, values after those prefixes and take those values out of a document, an email, a Slack message, a Teams message, whatever it is, and post it into that legacy or, or, or modern application. Um, so, so really that's, you know, some of the trying to visualize really or, or explain what RPA is about. Um, it's sometimes called software robots or bots. 
Um, but effectively, it's kind of logging into a system, you know, completing tasks uh, that are kind of repeatable and automated. Um, and yeah, I think it's something that if you're not using, you, you need to be using, and we we can come on to, to why in a, in a bit, bit later on. All right. Um, but you know, effectively, if you've got all technology and you 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 can't integrate it using APIs, then RPA is another is another option for you to consider across your technology stack. So where did it come from? And as with all these things, if people have seen the Power Apps or Power Platform uh, webinar that we've done here at Icotech, you, you know, this technology has been around for a long time. Uh, the wide use and deployment of this technology hasn't really been taken up, um, but it's planning to go through exponential growth over the next five years, according to Gartner and all the, all the studies out there. Um, but yeah, it could be traced back to the 2000s, you know, and, and it really does have three key technology components within it, a screen scraping, which is that kind of drag and drop thing, the workflow automation and AI, um, but I won't, I've obviously discussed that at length really. Um, but screen scraping is that process of, you know, uh, selecting a record with a mouse, almost like recording a macro, selecting a record with a mouse, you know, selecting a field and a copy and pasting that that field so that the 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 flow is almost um learning or recording every one of the steps that you action as a human and then saying i'm going to repeat that now in the background um there's a couple of different ways of doing it as well um you can have a desktop rpa so it's actually running on your desktop um, and you can put it into a remote desktop as well so it kind of happens systematically in the background without a human uh, even seeing it and I'll let Chris come on to some of the the kind of technicalities around actioning and, uh, and initiating those 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 flows later on. Um, so yeah, uh, the benefits then. So realistically, it's about boosting productivity. All right, it's about automating uh, tasks. Uh, you know, making it secure. So rather than giving lots of people um, access to systems and lots of people access to 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 kind of um, usernames and passwords, it's, it's allowing a system to do that. Um, of course, you've got to be you've got to be careful with security, control, governance, and information assurance as well. Even though it is a system, you've still got to control those things. Um, but it's about putting intelligence to work, really. Um, so you know, building these workflows so they're intelligent, they can learn, they can evolve over time, uh, and ultimately, all this is saving you, saving us time, and reducing costs as well. All right. And just some, some. I know this is. A, I don't like the slide. Actually, I, I looked at it this morning. I thought I don't like this, so I'll try to do it better next time. But I just wanted to kind of land some imagery on the page, really, to show you guys that you know this is uh, RPA and how you build RPA, and it's just to show you that it's in Power Automate as a service. So if you're used to using Power Automate to generate workflows, um, and you know, and you know, step by step guides. If yes, then do this. If no, then do those conditions. And if you're used to use a power automate in, in that way, uh, you'd be surprised how easy it is to, to evolve in. Um, so if you'd be surprised how easy it is to evolve into RPA. Um, I think one of the things that we'd recommend is downloading the desktop app of power automate. It just gives you a lot more uh, capability, really. Um, but anybody could build these tasks. Right? This is not about IT. This is not about you know coders or developers. Um, you know, once you understand it and you've been taught how to create these uh, automations, then you know really the, the you can you can start building these integrations and these automation processes uh, just by clicking and dropping and clicking and dragging um, and, and, and building and configuring these uh, workflows yourself. Um, I, I just want to reiterate as well that, that in our experience, it's really about you know legacy and cloud. That's really where this stuff works. Where you've got an old, archaic, expensive, probably system that sat on a server box in the corner of a room somewhere, uh, that's sort of accessed on a desktop or or a network, um, and you've got a modern CRM system somewhere else, you know, and you just want to connect those two sets of data together. Uh, maybe it's a rostering system, or uh, you know, a kind of um, a timesheeting or a clock in, clock out system, you know, in a factory, and you want to connect that then to an ERP system. RPA would be perfect for those type of use cases. All right. So, Chris, um, uh, over to you, mate. <laughs> Can you steal the screen off me and, and, and uh, give the the, uh, the audience a bit of a demo of RPA and just take us through what you've done, how you've done it, uh, and go from there? Of course, yeah. Cheers, mate. There we go. Hi, everyone. Uh, there we go. So you should be able to see my screen shortly. So this is the um, the Power Automate web uh, application that you can download for your desktops. Uh, so 
when we when we were planning this webinar uh, this morning, I came in to work and I, I, I spoke to our business admin and I asked her, uh, um, what's one of the roles that you do? You know, that's arduous, takes a long time to, to set up and, and, and go through. And a lot of it was in regards to uh, new starters to the business. Uh, so obviously when we when they email up new starters, we got to get a lot of information back and obviously plumb it into either like uh, their independent Excel form that we that we hold or onto our CRM. And then uh, fold back an email with you know a welcome pack or, or some some sort of additional documentation. Uh, so when I came in this morning, I've decided to create this quick little uh, RPA uh, that's going to connect to our Excel document that we hold staff information on, uh, and then open up my Outlook and email the customer. Uh, email the customer, sorry, <laughs> email the new staff member back with a welcome pack. Uh, what? Uh, well, while this is running. As you can imagine, it, it runs faster than a human can, uh, so you won't see a lot of action, uh, but you'll notice like Excel opening up at the bottom of the screen, then closing down. Uh, so it's doing it all, uh, as you, again, uh, as you can imagine, a lot faster than a person can. So I'm just going to run it and pray that it works because I was having a couple of issues. <laughs> it's, always, it's always the way, Chris, when, it, when something it doesn't work. Uh, but yeah, probably worth clarifying as well that we don't keep our important information on Excel. But uh, yeah, it's just an, <laughs> as, a, as an example, it's a, it's yeah. a great little use case uh, to, to, to kind of put, to put together, but yeah. So all this is running uh, on its own now. So all those clicks, uh, none of them were myself. Uh, and I've added a quick little pop up on the screen just to say, you know, just to give you guys a bit of a visual thing that it's all been completed. Uh, if I did uh, click OK on that, and I go back into my emails. There we go. You can notice I sent myself a quick little email, welcoming them to the team, uh, and attached a welcome pack. So all that was done automatically from opening up my Outlook to going to my new starter file, uh, grabbing the, the attachment that was sent from Tasha, plumbing it into a, a, a test Excel file with the, the contents information, which I can show you. Uh, uh, open that. Oops, sort of behind. Uh, there we are. Obviously, I've cleared out some text, but uh, those are the that's the information that was pulled through from my Word document, which I'll show you here. And it was automatically filled into the uh, required fields, uh, closed down the file, and then just forwarded off this welcome pack email to the new starter. So that, in a nutshell, is a simple, uh, quickly made RPA that will you know, save our business admin uh, a bit of time from taking the information out manually and having to copy and paste it into a, into a new location. It would just do it all fast for you. And like you said, it was probably less than 30 seconds to run. Uh, so that's about 15 minutes of time, you know, opening up the documents, grabbing the information, uh, pasting it into the, the, the cells or the fields that it requires on, on the particular CRM or Excel document, uh, all down in about 30 seconds. Hmm. So, yeah. So can you, can you take us through, Chris, how like roughly how, how it's built, just the logic in, in, in the Power Automate desktop app as well, please? Well, of course. So as you can see from here, it's all just a matter of steps, uh, as you would in any sort of macro or flow or any sort of automation, uh, where it's grabbing, the uh, t you're telling it what to do, and it's just acting as if it's a person. So it's opening up my Outlook, uh, it's going to my new start folder, it's grabbing the data from the files, and then it's going down, launching Excel, adding the information into each of the cells that you've, you've advised it to, saving my Excel document. It's going to close it. Then I've opened up my Outlook, sent an email. Uh, obviously, for test purposes, I sent it to myself, not the actual email that came from it. Uh, and then just display a message then to show that it's all been completed. So it is very, uh, very intuitive and straightforward. You also have uh, options where you can just record your screen. So if there is a particular set of uh, tasks that you do every day, and you have to do it. Uh, you can start this by recording your screen, going through it once, and then you can save it. And then every morning you could come in, run this if you wanted to manually, uh, and it would do those steps for you because you've you've literally recorded it uh, through this tool. 
Fantastic. And I guess um, one of the things you were doing earlier, Chris, just um, was that you kind of ran ran the the flow, didn't you? The, the the kind of RPA process automatically for the purpose of this this event. But what kind of triggers can we use to 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 automate that type of stuff in the future? Of course, yes. Yeah. So you can link this in with your Power Automate uh, as as it is, you know, an extension of that, uh, where you could have it set up so that you know it would automatically run once an email has come in that has a new starter. Uh, document, then it would totally, uh, it would identify that file, and then run this process straight for you. Mm. So you wouldn't even have to touch anything. You know, it would just identify it and and start. Mm. Cool. Okay. And some of the other things that we were looking at, or oh, I say we, you were looking at this morning, <laughs> is that uh, the actions on the left hand side. There's some quite cool stuff that we can integrate with, isn't there, in terms of the the the, the cloud, Google services, etc. Of course, you got cloud, you got PDF, you know, extracting text from PDFs, you know, that could be, uh, I don't know how many times I Google uh, PDF to Word document uh, uh, online just to, so I can convert a document just so I can easily edit it, uh, down to uh, cognitive issues with natural language and vision from Google, you know, label and logo detections. Uh, and I believe that, if I can remember which one it was in, there is a uh, text now. That's a text analysis, so you can get the uh, the language, the key phrases, or sentiment of, um, of of language. So you know, think where you could ping this in with your uh, Twitter accounts, and then you can get the sentiment of what you know. If someone tweets at you, you can get kind of the sentiment that they that they got behind the tweet, uh, mm. as it were, and then obviously post that or email it to someone or or, or save a copy of it uh, or tweet back. You know, you the the options are endless, pretty much. Yes. Imagine, <laughs> imagine tweeting back to the sentiment of, uh, <laughs> of, a, of a tweet. <laughs> That'd be dangerous. That would be. <laughs> that would be. I don't know how I, if I would be comfortable with it, but you know, you've got the option to do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, cool. So, uh, uh, Ursula, I've just seen your question in the chat window from uh, the, the start of the call. Of course, we'll share the uh, the presentation with you afterwards, uh, and also just for context, this is recorded and available on YouTube as well after the session. So feel free to refer back to it uh, or share it more widely across your community um but has anybody Thank uh, thanks Lisa, has anybody got any questions any any kind of could it do uh, how does it do those type of things for for for, for chris or for me <laughs> <One answer. laughs> so yeah if anybody's got please do you know, feel free to, to come off mute and just ask a question or or, or or you know we can we can run through it as best we can Uh, that's a good question. So for the, for this particular uh, demo that we've done here, which is for the obviously for the RPA, um, what you can do is you know if you uh, you can Google uh, uh, Power Automate Desktop and you can download the application. As you can see, this is this is an app that's on my system uh, that I got from Microsoft. Uh, for example, if I just do quickly, oh, I can't do it yet. Sorry, two seconds. Uh, if you wanted to build it yourself, uh, so there, there's multiple ways you can go around it. Uh, with this function, uh, you've got you can start by just using the actions on the left hand side of the screen. And I said you can go into any of them and you know run an application or uh, run a DOS command. You know you can program them to do what you'd like, as it were. Uh, that if you wanted to then have more of a basic kind of RPA creation. What I would offer is probably some of the web recorder or the desktop recorder. For example, if I clicked on a desktop recorder, it will load up and it'll ask you to start recording. Uh, and all you need to do is when you start recording, is when you click on particular items, as you'll notice, it will mark what you've done. If I close that one down, and then I'll just pause that one, for example, and if I click on finish, it will load back up the RPA app. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does take a bit of time. Uh, and if I scroll, oh, I don't know where I put it. Uh, oh, there it is. Sorry. Uh, and it just automatically adds those click elements into the into the steps that you've built. So yeah, Nadine, thank you, thank you for the question. I think um, you know it, it's it's really as simple as press and record and and 
and in kind of selecting those features and selecting those values. Um, and I think some of the more complex things here in this example flow that Chris has built this morning is the variables. So you can see on the on the on the right hand side there he's got the flow variables where he's picking up data from um, from a, a a Word document and saying you know store that as a variable and then deploy it into I guess into the uh, the Excel spreadsheet in this little example, um, which is um, yeah. But you know I encourage you to download Power Automate uh, Desktop um, and just you know you know new flow and, and play with the, the 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 icons at the top there um and you know it is quite intuitive um although chris 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 can confirm it's quite intuitive i haven't actually <laughs> yet done it because that's chris's job <laughs> sorry chris <laughs> thanks mate that's no, no worries. <laughs> but yeah you know um i think that that's the kind of how you really actually uh, go and go and execute on on that simple um simple um step-by-step -step process I've seen I've seen it work with um, password protecting websites as in a, a user account or a, or a, a log on, David, if that's what the question is. Um, a password protected document, not quite sure, uh, but pre presume it could. Uh, but I believe you can give it credentials, Chris, uh, and say, look, you know, this this user has authentication into, you know, Indeed.com, for example, with these passwords, and therefore take out these records of Indeed. You know. Of course, definitely, and uh, especially if they, you know, if there's a password to uh, protect a document on your system, like my, for example, my Excel one was, you know, you have the ability to enter in the password into the into the RPA, and it would add that into the uh, when it's attempting to open that document, it would add the password, so you can obviously uh, open it up then and add information to it. Cool. I think the next part of David's question is about uh, filtering and drop down menus. Um, or hover over to enable required data to be taken out. So I guess if I guess the use case there, David, is a it's like a list in SharePoint, and then saying, you know, if you've got you know risks that are open or closed, it's about saying, can you export all the open risks of that list, and I filter by open. And and I assume that Chris, you could do that in um, the web the web flow, and, and that would be a command a step after you log in uh, to the web flow to say, you know, filter by open. Um, then extract to Excel, and it would do it would do that um, our, that process for you automatically. Is that fair, Chris? Yeah, basically with the, with the RPAs because um, they're they're kind of like desktop automations. So you think about anything that you can do with your mouse, you know, by you know opening up SharePoint, logging in, um, you know, finding a list, exporting, etc. If you can do it, you know, with a mouse clicks, then you can definitely create uh, an RPA that will do it for you. Yeah. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. I, I'm just literally, I was toying with the idea then, Chris, of throwing you under the bus and just giving you, <laughs> give, giving you a list to go and to go and have a look at. But I'm thinking, what lists have we got in our live environment that that we can share with the with with the wider team? But um, uh, we we won't do that because that'll probably end up in in, in a bit of a, a failed failed attempt there. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, thank you, Joel. <laughs> Hopefully everybody can see on the call what happens in Nigatech is Joel comes up with these crazy ideas and Chris uh, has the unfortunate <laughs> task of going to figure them out. Uh, thanks, David, uh, and you, Dean, for your, for your, for your questions. Uh, much appreciated. Um, has anybody else got any questions that uh, or any other kind of use cases that um, they'd like us to, to, to walk through, really? I, th I think the only limitations that I, I've seen or, or that I can think of, if I'm honest, I haven't seen you know a great deal of them, um, but you know you get these uh, for more complex kind of RPAs. Uh, I think it'd be a lot more useful to have a lot more inf uh, actions on the left hand side, um, doing the, the the kind of desktop recording or the web uh, resource recording. It, you know it's very helpful for a lot of aspects, but you know if, if you're talking about you know pulling information from you know. Uh, 17 different locations into into one particular uh, file or into one particular application. Um, I think having a couple more of these actions on the left hand side, which you know I'm trying to scroll through for you guys, so you can see them. Uh, I think that would be a bit better. Uh, obviously, they do touch on a few uh, custom ones, you know, like uh, Microsoft and Bing, which obviously they would include in IBM document conversions. But I think um, 
similar to Flow, where when when my, uh, Power Automate, sorry, now as it's called, when Power Automate started, it, it only started with a, a limited number of connections, uh, and now I think they're up to about three, four hundred plus. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, get, I'm guesstimating that number at the moment. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've read it. Uh, so I think uh, as this is, it's not new per se, but it's newly hitting, uh, you know, a lot more users. I think the the amount of connections will go up, or the amount of actions, sorry, will go up. Uh, so I think that will be uh, that'll be the, the one I'd, I'd go to, if I'm honest. Yeah, no, I think you know, as with these things. Um... Uh, it will develop over time uh, more so, but you can see here from the type of connections that Chris is going through here, you've got a number of different plugins, um, controls and actions that you can use uh, with Power Automate. Um, but I think our advice uh, at iCotech is always start simple, start basic, take a simple use case, simple requirement and start playing with it, you know, have a go at doing something. Um, and that's, I guess, why we, we kind of wanted to show you something more simple today. Uh, you know, you can build monolithic kind of RPA AI machine learning algorithms and you know go crazy um, with snapshotting data and putting data into Azure and doing some crazy stuff with it. Uh, but actually, uh, I think that most people who will be who who could be using this and should be using this technology are not going to want to go and build those type of flows. They're going to want to go and build the flow here that Chris is, has demonstrated today, uh, which is just taking data from an email and putting it into a system, either SharePoint or Excel. Um, and, and that's where we, you know, I, I would advise anybody on this call to start trying to use the technology, um, you know, in, in the first instance. Um, Chris, I, I am going to give you a challenge, mate. I'm, I've just sent you a link to um, to a, 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 a um, what's it called, a SharePoint list, um, and I'm going to see if if you can. Uh, I'm going to give you a challenge to see if you can do a, a web um, RPA to to take out um, to filter by. Um, by a leave absence request. So, uh, do you want to? Do you want, do you want, you're going to take on my challenge, mate, in front of all these people. <laughs> I would prefer not to. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have to, do worry. But I just thought it'd, it'd be quite cool to see to see if that see that going through. Uh, but it's up to you, mate. <laughs> it, it's it's never great to try and create one of these under pressure. <laughs> That's yeah. what I will add to this. <laughs> well, we got, we got some left. <laughs> while it is widely intuitive, uh, yeah. and it, you know it, it is, uh, you know I can show you quick. Uh, I'll show you a quick example of one <laughs> of navigating to a different website uh, and stuff, but uh, <laughs> I'd rather not step on that challenge and fail miserably. <laughs> It's fine. We're all, fr we're all friends here. We're all friends here. Um, <laughs> I'm, mainly, I'm mainly going to base it off the fact that I don't actually know SharePoint that well. <laughs> so <laughs> I know more of everything else. But you, uh, I'm just going to give you a quick example of um, the web kind of side of it. As you can see, web recorder. Uh, but I'm just going to navigate to Google and do a search with it uh, and then show that back to you. So if I go uh, cool. to the right cover right view, I search. I know it was high risk of you throwing it back out at me saying, actually, Joel, why don't you have a go at doing the demo? <laughs> I thought I could put it away. Anyway. <laughs> then if I do that and I do uh, BBC uh, News. So it's almost it, just to articulate to everyone in the call here. So you can see the recorder there is recording everything that Chris is doing in terms of every click, every keystroke, and it's recording it into that log there. Um, and it, you know, it's, it's just, a, and then you can stop recording and, and navigate away um, and go to a different website. You know, it, it really is uh, that kind of uh, flexible um, to, to to kind of record those commands uh, going through the process. Promise, I need to remember where I put it. Uh, so if I just do this quick little one i'll probably send myself an email get a message but it's just because it's in the middle of our uh our thing uh, yeah it only captured the uh <laughs> it's only captured the, the launch of the uh the web page at the moment yeah but it, it does happen so quickly you can't even see it though isn't it it's sometimes like for me there it's like oh what, you know what, oh, almost yeah. what's, what's going on but uh there is a you know there is a, a logic to it and if you um who was it earlier who asked the question um uh, new Dean, if you just download it and start just going through that play and record uh, process and just failing, you know, just have a go at it, start, let it fail, let it show you what the error is, and then keep going through the process. You'll you'll get yourself to a to a process that works end to end. Then um, that's that's the idea, really. Cool. Um, any other questions from the call? If anybody wants to put anything in the chat window, please feel free to do so. Um, is there any questions that uh, anybody else has? I'm, I'm more than happy to throw uh, Chris another another challenge. <laughs> no, 
Okay, cool. So uh, thank you everybody for, for, for joining. Oh, actually, I actually forgot my last slide. Chris, I'm going to uh, take back control um, uh, as you do and just go through some last uh, last context and scene setting slides. Um, so yeah, um, RPA, the future of RPA. Um, so Gartner predicted that our RPA is going to replace 140 million full-time employees by 2025. Um, not saying that Gartner are always right, of course, but uh, you know, uh, it is a massively um, growth emerging market at the moment. Uh, of course, we've only shown you a really simple use case there, um, but um, you know, it is one of those technologies that is set to change operational and business uh, functions in the future. Um, I think one of the things to think about if you're accountable is understanding the security, the automation around uh, these technologies. Um, of course, they can be used uh, maliciously and they can be used in an unsafe environment. Um, so, uh, you know, great to kind of uh, for David's question earlier about, you know, kind of sign into a, a, a record or a service. But, um, you know, those type of requirements and challenges in the future, um, you know, could cause problems, of course, for, you know, uh, information assurance and that kind of thing. Um, and it's just one to, to, to be aware of, really. But yeah, RPA market is expected to reach five billion dollars uh, uh, by 2024. Uh, yeah, it's not that far away, really. But um, so if anybody's not using this technology, uh, the purpose of this session is just to share what it can do in the most simplest of forms uh, and encourage you all to, to and encourage everybody who can, um, you know, use these type of technologies uh, to to to, uh, to to utilize it, really. Um, so I'm if there's any other questions, please do let me know. Uh, we did have a Q&A session, but we had some good Q&As throughout the uh, the demo. A demonstration so so thank you for those for those people who asked those those questions much appreciated but if anybody does have any further thoughts questions wants to get in touch you can follow us on linkedin uh twitter youtube and facebook i mean <laughs> where where are we not i think it's only instagram that we're not on uh, so uh, but you can also call us on that number there or you can email us at info at architectservices.co.uk um, or connect with me on linkedin or chris um, we're more than happy to ha help or answer any other questions that you have um, as I said at the top of the call, if you want an hour of our time or a couple of hours of, well, Chris's time, not mine, uh, to take you through some of this stuff, uh, we're more than happy to share that with you and just to, to kind of um, prove some concepts or or solve some specific challenges for your business needs. So, yeah, I'll give you 20 minutes back of your, of your busy diaries. Thank you very much for joining. It is much appreciated. And uh, please do stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, we'll catch up on the next one.